Most people think fiber lasers can only be used on metal. But the truth is, these lasers can do a whole lot more than most people realize. In this video, I'll be testing 10 different materials that could open up a lot of creative possibilities. Whether you already have a machine and haven't pushed it beyond metal, or you've been on the fence about getting one because of its supposed limitations. Some of these results completely shocked me. Some were wins, and some were total fails. Either way, safety goggles on, let's put this fiber laser to the test. For these tests, I'm using my 50 watt fiber laser from RM Laser, and the software I'll be using is Lightburn. As I go through each material, I'll be sharing the exact settings I used right on the screen. So if you want to try any of these for yourself, you'll have a solid starting point. First up, real authentic leather. I used a piece of quarter inch thick hide, and honestly, the results were way better than I expected. I ran a few different tests at some different speeds, and I was able to get a full value range from light surface marking to deep, rich black burns. For a high contrast engraving, I ran it at 300 millimeters a second at full power. Cutting was 50 millimeters per second, also at 100% power, with three passes. I engraved a two inch leather patch with my business logo on it, engravings to you. And it turned out pretty clean and it had a great cut. Afterward, I wiped it down with isopropyl alcohol, which helped clean it up a bit, but did smear some of the char and darken the leather a little bit. I'm thinking if I seal the leather first with a wax or spray lacquer, that might prevent that from happening in the future. Next up, I tested some thin, laser-ready faux leather, and honestly, it might be the perfect material for fiber lasers. I ran the engrave at 300 millimeters per second at 40% power. For cutting, I dropped it to 160 millimeters per second at full power with two passes and it sliced right through with no problem. Cleanup was even easier than the real leather. No smearing, no discoloration, just sharp professional results. If you're doing patches, labels, or small runs, this stuff is a dream to work with. Real or fake, leather's a definite win for fiber lasers. I ran multiple tests on slate, and this material really surprised me. Depending on your settings, you can get a wide range of effects. From deep gray burns to a golden tone, even warm, brownish char. But the one that stood out the most was the bright, almost white frost effect that gave the best contrast by far. That came at 100 millimeters per second at 20% power. It created super sharp, high contrast marks that really pop, especially on the dark slate. No coatings, no masking, just clean results right off the machine. If you're looking for an easy custom gift or product idea, Slate's definitely worth experimenting with. I had high hopes for wood, but this one just didn't work out. I started with red oak plywood, but it would only engrave on the darker wood grain sections. The lighter parts barely reacted at all, which made detailed designs basically unusable. Then I moved on to walnut. Even after darkening it with lacquer, the results were still all over the place. The engravings looked patchy and inconsistent, and nothing I tried helped. I even masked the surface to see if that would even things out, but that still didn't work either. At the end of the day, fiber lasers just aren't meant for raw wood. If you're after reliable clean wood engravings, diode or CO2 lasers is the way to go. This one's a clear fail for team fiber lasers. After how poorly wood performed, I didn't have high hopes for paper or cardboard, but these actually delivered some of the best results in the whole test. On black paper, I started with a simple logo engraving at 600 millimeters per second and 30% power. And the details were super crisp. I was having some issues with recreating raster images. Then after some trial and error, I discovered that slowing things way down and capping the power at just 25% let me recreate some photorealistic images using a dot matrix mode like Jarvis. Cardboard also surprised me. At 300 millimeters per second and 30% power, it engraved cleanly, and I was able to cut through it with three passes at 100% power, using a speed of 160 millimeters per second. I also ran a quick test on plain white copy paper and got some surprisingly decent results there too, using 60% power at 300 millimeters per second. If you're doing packaging, inserts, or mock-ups, this combo is way more capable than you'd expect from a fiber laser. We can mark this one down as a win for fiber lasers. Next up is metal, but instead of basic engraving, I wanted to show you something a little different. By intentionally shifting the fiber laser slightly out of focus, you can oxidize the stainless steel and bring out a range of colors. Blues, purples, bronzes, and even hints of gold. 
Most people assume this is only possible with a MOPA fiber laser, but with a bit of experimentation, you can pull it off with a standard machine like this one. The key is running slow speed, high frequency, and adjusting your focus just enough to build heat without burning through the surface. It takes some dialing in, but once you get it right, you can create some really eye-catching effects, all without a drop of paint. Now, before we move on, here's something important to know. Everything you've seen so far has been done with a standard 50-watt fiber laser. It's powerful and versatile, but when it comes to color marking stainless, it can be a little tricky, especially since I'm using the defocusing method to bring out those colors. It works, but getting consistent results takes some trial and error and sometimes a bit of luck. RM Laser also offers MOPA models in a 30 watt, 60 watt, and a 100 watt option. What makes MOPA different is that it gives you control over the laser's pulse duration, meaning you can fine tune how the laser heats the surface. That's what allows for those precise color changes on stainless and cleaner black marks on aluminum. I've got a video of their 30 watt MOPA engraving a stainless dog tag and the difference is clear. No defocusing, just clean, repeatable color. So if you're wanting to do a lot with color and looking for consistency and control, a MOPA laser is definitely worth considering. All right, now let's get back to our testing. Cork was one of those materials I really thought would work well, but it ended up being one of the more disappointing results. On the surface, it seems perfect for engraving. It's lightweight, organic, and common in crafts and coasters. But in practice, it just didn't hold up. The problem is that the cork has light and dark speckles throughout. Just like we saw with the wood, the darker areas would take the laser just fine, but the lighter spots barely reacted at all. That left me with inconsistent patchy engravings that didn't look clean or professional, no matter how I adjusted the settings. So unless you've got a super uniform cork material, I'd say this one's not worth the trouble we're gonna to have to put cork over into the fell category. Next up, I tried making some custom rubber stamps, and this one was a pleasant surprise. Using laser safe rubber, the fiber laser was able to engrave deep and detailed impressions that held sharp lines even in small text and logos. I used moderate speed with full power and a tight line interval, and it carved out a clean, usable stamp surface in just a few passes. Cleanup was a bit messy. Rubber creates a lot of powder and smells a bit like a tire fire while engraving. But thankfully, I was running the Xtool AP2 air purifier and it did a great job of keeping the smells down. But once your engravings are all done, the results are solid. My smaller stamps were a little tricky to use on paper without a wooden handle glued to the back, but I can definitely see the potential here for branding, crafts, or custom packaging. With a little finishing work, this could really be a useful tool in the shop. Thankfully, with rubber, we have another win for fiber lasers. Next up was black acrylic. And while fiber lasers can't cut it cleanly, they can absolutely engrave it. I was able to create a large variety of different types of engravings, from crisp grays, warm tans, and even dark and slightly textured finishes, if you really like that burnt-in look. I like the high contrast that I got at 60% power at 550 millimeters per second. That seemed to be the sweet spot for me. I did try cutting it with a fiber laser, but the results weren't great. You can see it here just kind of melting and pulling up and not cutting all the way through. So I moved over to my RM1390 CO2 laser to cut out some clean shapes that I could later engrave on with the fiber laser. This combo opened up some exciting possibilities. My business, Engravings to You, already sells QR codes on wood, but using black acrylic gives those products a sleek, modern look that could attract a whole new customer base. If you've got access to both machines like this, black acrylic is a great one to add to your lineup. Mark this one down as a win. Fiber lasers aren't just for engraving. They're also a surprisingly effective tool for rust removal. I tested it on an old set of needle nose pliers that looked pretty rough. Lots of surface rust and wear. With just a few quick passes at a high power, the laser stripped the rust clean off, revealing a bright brand new looking tool underneath. No chemicals, no wire brushing, just fiber laser power. It's one of those uses that feels a bit like magic. And if you've got old tools or parts lying around, it's a great way to bring them back to life. Rust removal is a win for fiber lasers. 
Next up was denim, specifically a pair of old blue jeans. And this one was a total fail also. I tried multiple times to get clean marks, but every time I got close, the laser either burned through or the fabric straight up caught on fire. Even with a lower power and faster speeds, I just couldn't find a setting that gave good results without destroying the material. At least with this shade and type of denim. It just wasn't happening. That said, maybe I'm missing something. Black denim or a different weave might react differently. So if you've had success with that, definitely let me know in the comments. For now though, this one goes into the fail column. So there you have it. 10 different materials tested and torched with a 50 watt fiber laser. Some were solid winds like black acrylic, slate, and rubber. Others like denim and cork were total fails. But even the fails were valuable because they show just how far you can push these machines. Fiber lasers aren't just for metal. With the right settings and a little curiosity, they can unlock a ton of creative potential across all kinds of unexpected materials. If you already have a fiber laser sitting in the shop, hopefully this has inspired you to try something new. Or if you've been on the fence about getting one, maybe this gave you a clearer picture of what's possible. Big thanks to RM Laser. They offer a full range of lasers, no matter what you're looking for, whether CO2, fiber, MOPA, they pretty much have it all. If you want to check out any of their machines, you can click the link in the description or scan this code to take you directly over to their website. Let me know in the comments what you'd like me to test next, or give me some tips and tricks that I could use to maybe turn some of those fails into wins. Until then, I'm Chad from Chad's Custom Creations. Be encouraged, stay inspired, and keep on creating.